Hello everybody, here's my mama and she's gonna be making her famous fried pies for y'all. She's gonna make apple pies today. Apple and cherry pies. And here's all the ingredients, everything that you'll need. I'll let her explain it to you and walk you through the, it. We got the cherry pie filling, uh, the caramel apple pie filling, and all you're gonna need, I use canned biscuits, but you can make biscuits and use them. That's what mom used to do. She used to make her biscuits to make them. But uh, we're gonna be making these with our canned biscuits, the uh, giant ones. What do you call these? Grands? I think they're called Grands. Huh? Yeah. So, see, I don't even know what they're called because I hardly ever use them. But for uh, pies, it's easy to do. Instead of uh, standing here trying to make biscuits and get them done and everything, or the dough. So I just roll this out. I think I got, I hope I got enough flour out there. I've done made some while ago, had Papa to check them out. It'd been a long time since I made apple pies. And this is the first time that I made them from uh, canned biscuits. I used to make the dough and do it. But you roll it out real thin and they turned out beautiful while ago. So let's see what they do now. You get your uh, uh, pan of grease. You could put it in your deep fryer if you have it, but I thought I would do this because people's always saying, well, how do you do it in a skillet? How do you do your fried chicken in a skillet? So I thought I'd show you, this is what mom done. This is the way she done it. So you roll your dough out thin. And uh, get it rolled out here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mash it a little bit. And make sure you have flour on your rolling pin so it won't stick. I might have to get me some more flour out here. And we use Hudson cream flour. While we put on here, you can use self rising or plain. Here's the flour she uses always flour Hudson cream. Hurts. She uses Hudson cream cornmeal too, and self rising flour or just regular bleached flour. She uses Hudson cream for everything. Yeah. For those of y'all that didn't know. I like the Hudson cream. So, here's my cherry pie filling. I come in a while ago and I thought I had everything. Couldn't find my caramel apple pie. I said, now I know I had some pie filling. And so I said, well, I guess I'll just make it with the cherries. This is Papa's favorite anyway, is the cherry pie. I used to make them and put them in his bucket. And then you just take your uh, water here and go around the sides so it'll stick better. But uh, and then you have to make sure that your, your grease is hot enough too. Said so we'll do this way here. Then you take your fork and you can go around it. This will make it stay better. Your filling will stay in it better. And like I said, it's, this is the first time I made apple pies, I couldn't tell you when. And if you wanna pretty it up, you can uh, use your knife to kinda cut the excess off. So, but let me make another one and we'll stick it in there. So here's my other pie. What did I put in there? Apple, I put cherry, didn't I? We'll, mm -hmm. we'll put apple this time. And uh, I like this spoon, it's real good to dip with. This one's a little bit bigger, but it still works. I always put two slices of apple on it. If I can get it out. And then you wet it, go around it, and wet your dough. And this will make it stick. So, and they are good, we done tried one. Then you fold it up. And see, this looks like it's gonna to be too much. You'll probably have to cut a little bit off. But then you take your fork and go around your pie. See, some's coming out already. Sometimes you can, you can put too much, you know, but that'll be all right. So that may, let me get a piece of my dough here. Let's see what this does. See if it's hot enough. 
Yep. It's hot enough. So we'll go ahead and slip these in. Now you have to be very careful when you do it like this. You gotta just barely drop them in there. So, cause if you drop them in fast, it's gonna splash grease everywhere. And then I have my spoon that's got the holes in it. You let it fry for a little bit till it gets brown on one side, and then you do the other side. And while that's getting brown, I'm gonna roll two more. I'm gonna take a paper towel and get this excess apple off here. When it gets brown on one side, you turn it on the other side. But I'll make two more after I get this here. But, but this is easy if you use the biscuits. Canned biscuits is what I use. Let's see here. Now it needs to stay over just a little bit longer. You want it golden brown. So, we roll these on out. I think I'm going to have to get some more flour out. Yeah, you but need enough flour. Really huh? You need enough flour to put on the, the yeah. baking or, or your sheet or whatever. Yeah. So they won't stick to that sheet and they won't stick yeah. to the rolling pin. And you can take your hands in my I'll tell you, I put some more flour on that. But let's turn this over. You want it golden brown. Like that. A bit more of my flour out and put it around here. Because it's starting to stick. And you have your uh, plate ready to put them in there. And it don't take long to fix them at all. You want to make sure they're golden brown. these over here. I'll do two more to show you how they turn out. You just roll them out real thin. Okay, see if you don't have powder on it, the flour on it, it uh, kind of sticks. So you try to roll them out long wise. Like I said, this is the first time I made pies. I couldn't tell you when. I used, when he worked, I made him and put him in his bucket, but I made him from biscuit dough, you know. So we'll put another apple pie. I guess that had to be about 15 years ago because Papa hasn't worked in about 15 years. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, and I think it was maybe even before then, I've done it when he first started working in the mines. Oh. You know. And here's the cherry. I should have turned it the other way, but I'll turn it around. There's the apple and there's the cherry. So you wet them around here. Yeah, we're going to church tonight. Papa's supposed to preach tonight at church. So he's in our studying, getting ready. We had to take Annie to the doctor day, and then they said they couldn't see her until... Uh, for a month. And I'm like, man, they was moving or something. So, and then you take your pie, and you turn it around here. You take your pie and pull it over and punch around here. Then you take your fork, whoops, and you go around that. Like that. And you do this in the same way. Did I water that? I did, didn't I? I hope I did. Yeah, you did. When you get old, you forget sometimes. If you are still watching, make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, we got real warm weather here today. But it says it's cool, but to me it's hot. But the weather is cooling down. I'll drop it in there real easy. So you don't get it on you. And then you let it get golden brown. 
And then when it gets golden brown, you flip it over. Yeah, Mom used to make us apple pies all the time, too. Uh, when we was kids. And then I'll show you how to make the um, icing to put on it, the glaze. Mom used to do that, too. She used to make donuts for us. But now Dad was the candy maker. Mom was the one that done the, the pies and the donuts. So... That's the sweets that we had. We didn't go to the store and buy candy and stuff. And pop. We always had Kool-Aid. So. Oh, yeah. So we'll cut this off. And we'll get this out. And like I said, you got to be very careful with this hot grease. And then I'm going to slide this over and you do it carefully. And then we come over here. Let me put this down here. And here's the glaze. Now what you do with it, how you make the glaze, you take, uh, I'm going to use my hands here. This is powdered sugar. I'm going to put some in here. And you put just water on it until it's thin. Let me get my hands dusted off here. And make sure you got all the lumps out of your uh, icing, out of the, the powdered sugar that's not lumpy. It's a glaze, just water. You put about four tablespoons of uh, the powdered sugar, and then you just take a spoon at a time, put it in there and stir it up. If it's not enough, then you just get a little bit more water and put it in there. To it's the right uh, consistency. So you need it to be like that. So you can uh, drizzle it over the that. So I'm waiting till they cool a little bit. Then I'll show you the ones that we've already done. And then I'll come in here to and finish them up. But then just drizzle. Just take your spoon and kind of drizzle it over it. And this will get hard and put as much as you want on it, whatever you like. And it will get hard and be on there, stay on there. These might not be cool enough. I guess they are. And that's all you do. And there's your pies. And like I said, you can use any kind of pie filling you want to use. Or if you got canned apples or anything like that but now uh some uh pie fillers i don't think work but uh the cherry and the apple works real well but i like to try some lemon i thought i had some lemon but i didn't but now we used to have a man that come around from the church his wife used to make all kinds of pies and uh, we would buy them from him but uh she made everything chocolate lemon uh, cherry, apple, I can't remember what all she did make, but it was good. I think she even made raisin. But uh, that's all you do, is to make your pies, and it's quick and easy. So now I'll go over here and read some to you and talk to you a little bit more. And uh, I'll show, show them our finish there. Yeah, here's the ones that she made earlier. Let me get a spoon and show them, and then I'll talk about that. See how soft? And I'll just cut them too and show you. This is the cherry one. It's soft and it's got the filling in it. My daughter got her teeth pulled and she said, is it soft, Mom? She's been like that for about four days. I said, yeah, you can eat it. I just made Corey hungry. <laughs> yeah. But what I was going to tell you, there was a lady to send this to me, and it's not the right one. I think she said her daughter does them. And she must have had another one for me because she said this was supposed to go to another lady or somebody else that retired. So I was wanting to tell her that we'll send this back, but do you want us to send it? 
to the address that's on here. It is Jennifer Cox, BNJ's Creations. I don't know if that's hers, or you want to send, uh, send it back here, or you're going to send us the address that you want us to send us back to you. Mm -hmm. And then there was another lady that uh, sent us some uh, uh, flea stuff for cats, and it was supposed to went to her cats, and it come here by mistake. But there was no address on it, and I messaged her, and let me tell you, I don't know how I've done that. I just thought, well, I'm gonna try to see if I can message this lady. So I pushed on it and I could message her. So I messaged her and told her if she wants to mail that back to her that she will have to send us her address uh, to Corey or, uh, you know, we can't send it back to her if we don't have address. But uh, yeah, we'll send it back to you and we'll send this one back too, but we gotta know where to send them to. But God is good all the time. And I'm gonna read some to you now. Here's the prayer book. Oh, and here's the prayer book. And I hate it because last time I forgot. I told my husband I was uh, a Russian and I shouldn't have been Russian. But we do pray over us every day. Every uh, night when I go to bed, we pray over it. Me and Milton prays over when we're sitting in there and we're talking about it, we pray over it all the time. And everybody that I see that wants a prayer, put in the prayer book, I always put it in there, you know. And so y'all's y'all names are all in here, you know. But uh, And I keep adding more every day. So, uh, but I want to remember everybody in prayer. And I'm going to pray over this right now for y'all. And then I'll read y'all a, a message out there. Dear Lord Jesus, we just come to you right now, Lord, in your name, Lord Jesus. We ask you to move upon each and every one of these prayer requests, Lord. You see their needs, Lord. And some of them are desperate, Lord Jesus. They need to move right now, Lord. And ask you, Lord, to move up on them, Lord. Whether it's he uh, health issues, Lord, sickness, Lord. Whether it's financial problems, Lord, or or they need a home, Lord, whatever it might be, or they're going through surgery, Lord. I ask you to be with them, Lord Jesus, and comfort them, Lord. Uh, let them know that you're with them, Lord, and you're going to help them, Lord. Uh, Jesus, in your mighty name, Lord, uh, just let them know, Lord, they just need to hold on to you and to trust in you, Lord, that you are moving, Lord. Uh, and there's many people out there praying for them, Lord Jesus, and the Lord will move, Lord. You know, God does answer prayer, and everything comes in a prayer, you know. A prayer answer is always, God always answer a prayer, you know. Sometimes it might be yes, and sometimes it might be no. Not right now. You know, we have to wait sometimes. Amen. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go to the Word now. And I, remember, I pray for, we pray for y'all all the time. I like this little thing here. It's getting so hard for me to see anymore. So I told uh, Corey and Milton, I'm going to use this. You know, it makes it real big and easy to read. I love it. It says, I'm in uh, Isaiah 51. It says, A Call to Trust the Lord is what the title of it is. And it says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock which you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit which you are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah, and bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, and he will comfort us too. In our trying times, he will comfort us. Like I told you many times about my son died. God walked with me all through that. He was with me for a long time. He walked with me. Well, he still walks with me. But in the hard times, when it was so hard, he was there with me, you know, and comfort me through it. And I could feel his presence. I knew he was there. And I just thank the Lord. I don't know what people do without the Lord on their side, you know, to comfort them and help them through the hard times. So, and we are going to go through hard times. That's life. You know, we are going to go through hard times. We will lose lost loved ones, you know, but or we will lose loved ones, you know, but that's a part of life. We just have to ask God to help us through it. It says, He will comfort all her waste places, and He will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Well, my righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. Uh, lift up your eyes to the heaven, and look up upon the earth beneath uh, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, 
and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear you not the reproach of men, neither be you afraid of their ravelings. You know, we don't have to be afraid of people out there. It's all time threatening and everything. Uh, we just have to hold on to the Lord, you know, and trust in him, you know. And God will take care of the ones that will come against you. He will shut their mouths and he will turn them away from you. You know, we just have to trust in the Lord. I'm going to read a little bit in the commentary now. Y'all know me. I love my commentary, especially in this Bible here. Uh, it says, uh, The faithful raiment may have felt alone because they were few, but God remained, reminded them of their ancestors, the source of their spiritual heritage. Abraham and Sarah, Abraham was only one person, but much came from his faithfulness, uh, and it will. Much will come from your faithfulness. If you be true and faithful to God, he'll be true and faithful to you. He, he won't turn his back on you. He'll always be there. Sarah had only one child, Isaac, but many descendants. Uh, if the faithful few would remain faithful, even more could come from them. If we Christians, even a faithful few remain faithful, think of what God can do through us. Just think. You know, prayer changes things. If all the Christians would pray together and ask God to turn this nation back to him, it can happen. But if it's time for him to come back, you know, we have to say, your will, Lord. But it says, Eden and the garden of the Lord are refreshings to the garden of Eden at creation. The land of Israel would once again flourish like Eden did when the world was created. And one day we will get to experience a similar place. At the end of the world, the Lord will make new heavens and a new earth. About this, John wrote, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And that's in Revelations 21 and 5. Those who follow God will be part of the new creation. Now, Israel encouraged those who followed God's laws. He gave them hope when they faced the reproach of other people or suffered insults because of their faith. We need not fear when people insult us for our faith because God is with us and truth will ultimately prevail. And it will, the truth will prevail, you know. And uh, y'all just hang on to God because he's a moving and he'll take care of you, you know. One day after a while, we'll be somewhere where there's no more trouble, no more sorrow, no more death, you know. No more tears to shed. You know, down here on this earth, that's all it is, is uh, problems and trials that we go through. But, you know, we walk with God and be true to him. And one day after a while, he'll be true to us. And we'll go to a joyous place. I love y'all. I thank y'all for everything that y'all have done for me and Corey and Papa. Y'all just been so good to us. And I love you and I thank you for it. So we'll see you tomorrow, Lord's willing. You know. Well, that's all for today. And we love y'all. God bless y'all. We'll see y'all in the next one. Amen.